Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and in this video, we're going to be investigating a hypothetical scenario of destroying asteroids using nuclear weapons. In other words, we're going to be talking about a scenario that we may have seen in movies like Armageddon, where people destroy asteroids with nukes and it seems to work fine. So let's find out if it's possible, and welcome to What the Math. <laughs> Now, I'm sure by now most of you, if not all of you, have seen the movie Armageddon from like, I guess, a decade ago, where uh, the Bruce Willis team uh, decides to destroy an incoming asteroid using a nuke. Uh, obviously, it looks cool in the movie and it obviously it does seem to uh, kind of work, but I wanted to do a bit of science and find out if it's possible. Specifically, what I wanted to do is discover if a, uh, well, not just one nuke, but basically all of the nukes from the arsenal of the world could potentially destroy an, an incoming asteroid. For example, an asteroid similar to the one that uh, hit somewhere right here and was responsible for causing the dinosaur extinction. That particular asteroid was about six kilometers in radius and we're going to see if it's actually possible to completely destroy the asteroid before it hits the Earth. First of all, let's start with a little bit of scientific investigation. We're going to make an assumption that uh, the asteroid is still going to be relatively far from Earth, but not too far, um, possibly within about 40 to 60,000 kilometers. So in other words, this is like a last minute detection and a launch of nuclear weapons. Uh, let's start with a relatively small but famous asteroid called Apophis. This is the one that we were afraid is going to actually hit Earth. And um, we then realized that it's, it's going to be just fine for at least another thousand years. Apophis is actually not very big, it's only about 162 meters, as you can see. And so right now it's actually flying toward our planet um, at a speed of about two and a half kilometers per second. Well, in reality, it's probably going to be moving a little bit faster than that. Now, let me show you what happens if we just detonate a nuke um, inside of it and basically just try to destroy it. In other words, we're not going to um, create a large explosion, we're just going to essentially make it fall apart. To do this, all we need to do is detonate a nuke on it uh, that's about equivalent to the one from um, Hiroshima back in 1945. Uh, just a little bit more um, powerful than Hiroshima, which is, I think it's approximately 15 kiloton of TNT. Although I guess we can actually check by going here. Okay, it's 17,000, uh, 17 kiloton of TNT. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just essentially launch this and well that's it that's the explosion but as you can see the fragments are actually not flying away too fast as a matter of fact um the fragments are still here and so in other words the entire mass of this asteroid is actually still flying toward earth and as a matter of fact as you'll see in a few seconds it's still going to hit earth now it's not going to hit earth as a single piece but that doesn't actually matter because the mass that's basically moving toward Earth now is still the same and it's moving just as fast and it will deliver just as much energy. It doesn't have to be a big chunk uh, like a rock. As a matter of fact, asteroids are not rocks, they're not chunks. They do fall apart before the uh, collision. And so you'll see in a few seconds that it's still going to hit what seems to be North America, possibly California. And not only is it going to hit California, but it's also going to hit California with this tremendous uh, radioactive explosion that was, well, delivered from the detonation of that uh, nuclear weapon that we actually detonated. So, okay, so that creates a problem. That means that we have to detonate a, an asteroid with a nuke that uh, is also going to disperse the pieces. The pieces actually have to fly away laterally, sideways, left and right, up and down, um, at fast enough speed to basically avoid Earth. So let's see if we can try this again. So here comes Apophis number two. This time though, we're going to give it a lot more energy. As a matter of fact, we're going to detonate a much larger nuke on it. Uh, let's just say maybe like a one megaton, which is a typical ICBM nowadays. Uh, so um, a typical ICBM in Russia or in US would probably have around one megaton of yield. So a single megaton nuclear weapon detonated inside of this asteroid is going to do the following. So let me just slow this down a little bit. It's going to, 
well, it's going to explode the asteroid and the pieces are going to start flying away at around 400 meters per second going laterally. Let's see if this is going to be enough for us to um, avoid the collision with planet Earth. And remember, this is from a relatively close distance, so if we were farther away from Earth, it would most likely work. But it seems that from this distance, we are basically just dispersing the asteroids over a much larger um, area. It basically just detonated all over the ocean here. And although a single point detonation is not going to be large enough, but because these asteroids or pieces of asteroids are still delivering the same amount of energy, just dispersed over a larger area, it's still going to be quite dramatic. Okay? Attempt number three. This time we're going to detonate Apophis with the most powerful nuclear weapon ever. That's of course the Soviet Tsar Bomba, which I believe had a yield of about 50 megaton. Now, we don't really make these anymore. As a matter of fact, even that particular nuclear weapon was extremely difficult to carry and to drop because it was just too heavy. But nevertheless, if we were to actually detonate Tsar Bomba here, as you can see, the pieces actually fly away really fast. And the explosion that follows is going to be a lot more dramatic than before. As a matter of fact, it's going to be a huge explosion, uh, equivalent to a 50 megaton nuclear bomb. This is a very, very large area. All right, so let's see what happens to those pieces, though. Uh, so the pieces are now moving away from us um, relatively fast. They're actually going laterally a lot faster. But are they going to hit Earth? That's really the question. And it sounds like, or it looks like, this time, for the most part, nothing really... Oh, no. Yeah, some of them did. But a lot of them actually did uh, move around Earth. So, in other words, uh, one Tsar Bomba was enough to kind of divert most of the pieces from an Apophis-like asteroid. And that's not uh, actually giving me a lot of hope because I'm trying to destroy an asteroid that's way, way more massive and way larger than Apophis. So let's try this with an actual uh, dinosaur killer equivalent that we're going to base on this uh, asteroid we discovered only um, relatively recently. Uh, this is, we believe, a uh, we believe this came from outer space, from outside of the solar system. And we're going to change this radius to 6 kilometers, giving it basically a uh, much lower mass as well. So this is kind of what the dinosaur killer was like. Now, in this particular simulation, what I want to do is I want to imagine that the entire world launches the entire capacity, its entire nuclear capacity of every country at this asteroid, or at least somehow puts it inside of the asteroid to try to explode it. And let's see what happens. Now, this actually requires a little bit of math. Uh, so, we believe there's approximately 14,000 nuclear weapons on planet Earth right now. Um, some of them are small, some of them are only a few kilotons in yield, and some of them are relatively large, uh, several megatons. On average, I believe it will be about 100,000 kiloton per uh, a single weapon. And let's assume that we also combine all of the nuclear weapons from the past and Historically, the entire world used up approximately 500 uh, megaton of nuclear weapons. And that includes the 50 megaton Tsar Bomba. So let's say that, okay, so we have 14,000 weapons. Um, each of them is on average about 100,000 or 100 kiloton. That creates a 1.4 gigaton weapon. Plus 500 will give us something around 2 gigaton. So, in other words, we can actually hypothetically launch a 2 gigaton weapon at this asteroid. Now, that's best case scenario. In reality, a lot of those weapons are actually not uh, ICBMs. There, A lot of them are bombs, a lot of them are even torpedoes. So not all of them will be able to fly. But we're going to assume that we did that. And so, 2 gigaton weapon is approaching this asteroid. Let's actually call it the dinosaur killer and let's see what happens to it now it's still relatively far from earth and if it was farther we would probably not need to launch as much but let's see what happens if we actually do basically detonate this particular weapon of two gigatons at this dinosaur killer so 
I'm going to actually slow down time a little bit because the explosion is probably going to be very large. And here we go. Looks like it's going to happen any second. There we go. And three, two, one. There's the explosion. Two gigaton nuclear weapon. That's insane. The actual explosion seems to be... Okay, so if this was um, six kilometers, I guess that's something like 40 kilometer diameter. Basically a tremendously large, exceptionally large um, nuclear fireball that it created. That's definitely going to be coming toward Earth now. Oh, it's even bigger than that. Look at that. Yeah, that's at 100 kilometers now. So this tremendously large nuclear ball that you can definitely see from space. Oh, it may be not as big as I thought. Um, is now either going to be heading at Earth and basically depositing all of this nuclear waste across the planet. Or if we're lucky, the actual pieces will fly apart and avoid the planet. So let's actually see what the science dictated. I'm actually going to select the pieces just so you can see them. Uh, they're all over the place right now. And here they come. Now, we're just trying to see if any of them actually hit Earth. For the most part, many of them may. Although their dispersal speed was actually close to about um, 17 kilometers per second. So, I think what happened now is that even though their dispersal speed was so high, because they were so close to Earth, they still ended up essentially getting captured by Earth's gravity. And because Earth gravity is relatively powerful, it is now attracting all of these pieces and they're all going to be coming to Earth. Even though the explosion separated them by quite a large distance. And that's of course very bad for Earth because now you can see all of this nuclear waste is being deposited pretty much all over the place. It essentially destroyed the entire India. Uh, and that's kind of why um, most countries like US and, and Russia that have like 92% of the entire nuclear arsenal prefer to make smaller weapons, but a lot of them, rather than making one large one, because that way you can deposit nuclear detonations over a much larger area. All right, so it seems that we were able to use the entire arsenal of Earth to kind of destroy an asteroid approaching Earth, but um, it still basically ended up destroying a large part of Earth. However, let's try this again last time, but this time launch it from a distance closer to the moon. So basically we, will, we were able to detect this asteroid way, way before it approached Earth. And so now we have a slightly higher chance of maybe um, causing serious destruction here and uh, having those pieces separate much faster. Okay, and here we go. So here comes that second detonation this time much farther away and we're going to watch the pieces as they fly apart and some of them will actually i guess a large part of them will actually go the opposite direction and will never even reach earth and many of them might even end up on the moon but it looks like because i did this so far away from earth we were now actually quite successful at destroying this asteroid but i guess the lesson here is that if we were to try to destroy asteroids with nukes we would have to do it from much farther away distance um, as opposed to the distance that you saw in a movie like Armageddon, where it was basically right next to Earth. So that would not really work very well. One nuke would not be enough, even all of the nukes would not be enough. But from this distance, you can see that, uh, well, the dispersal was much larger, and I think a lot of pieces did actually disappear and fly away. But nevertheless, that doesn't actually uh, change the fact that destroying an asteroid with nukes is not only a horrible idea, but will most likely result in a much, much larger dispersal of damage on top of all of this nuclear waste coming to us as well. So if we were to actually destroy an asteroid with nukes, it would bring a lot more devastation and a lot more destruction than a typical asteroid without a nuclear uh, detonation. So that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. And before we finish this video, let's go ahead and also destroy the moon. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something about nukes and detonation of asteroids using nuclear weapons. And in the next video, I'm going to show you something else. So do come back tomorrow and subscribe if you still haven't. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.